Right, so Platform Line's value proposition is all about making OpenStack Power Cloud at any scale, extremely simple and easy and out of the box, right? And we do that by having this OpenStack as a service model around deployment of OpenStack. But what is just as important to us as the ease of use is really that expanded compatibility or interoperability layer that we have with our end users infrastructure. Right, so our proposition is that take what you have, take any storage, any networking, any server infrastructure, scatter it across geographies in the world, we will take it and we'll convert it into an OpenStack cloud for you. Right, so we're going to focus on a subset of that interoperability. We're going to talk about how we interoperate with storage and networking. Um, and this is an interesting topic for today because earlier today we also made some exciting announcements. Uh, we announced our partnership with SolidFire. Um, and to me, that's really exciting because from an end user's perspective, right, he can now take his SolidFire storage platform, which is, uh, you know, high performance, um, all flashed storage array, mm -hmm. and he can very seamlessly, uh, in a very out of the box way, integrate it through a few clicks in his platform line user interface into his OpenStack cloud. Right, so that gives our end users ability to build this end-to-end -end integration uh, that's all part of their next generation data centers. Right, and this is one of the many partnerships that we're going to be talking about announcing over the next few months. Um, but in this session, I'm actually going to demonstrate to you exactly how that integration works with SolidFire using Platform 9. Okay, so let's switch back to our demo setups. I have this um, another Platform 9 demo environment, and this one is paired with Linux infrastructure instead of VMware vSphere. Um, so Platform 9, as Sirish mentioned, has uh, our core value proposition, a single pane of glass across KVM and VMware vSphere and in future Docker. Um, so we uh, specialize in providing that same consistent user interface and same set of features, regardless of what hypervisor you're using. Right, so this particular setup has three KVM servers. Um, the way you work with KVM is very similar to the way you operate with VMware infrastructure. Um, in case of KVM, all you need to do is download this little platform line agent. It's about a few megabytes or so in size, and you drop it on each of your Linux physical servers. So we had done that already with this setup. I had paired these three physical servers with Platform Line Agent already. And so once the agent gets downloaded and installed on your physical servers, it then makes an outbound connection with your cloud-hosted controller. It authenticates itself. And the rest of the model is exactly the same. Right, so that has been done with these servers. Um, if you look at this assigned roles column that's on the right-hand side, You'll notice that all the servers have been assigned hypervisor role, um, but one of the servers is also assigned image library role. Okay, so Platform 9 has this kind of streamlined role assignment based model where we let our end users determine what subset of their infrastructure should be dedicated for what. And the same concept is extended as we integrate with your advanced storage and networking stacks. All right, so let's look at how an end user would integrate with his existing SolidFire deployment using Platform 9. So I'm going to take one of these servers, uh, and I'm going to edit the configuration for the server. And here, you will notice I've been presented with a couple of options. So I'm going to get into this block storage option, and I'm going to click yes on that box that asks me if I want to assign Cinder storage role to this server. Okay, and what this means is by clicking yes, I'm allowing Platform 9 to install some Cinder specific components, Cinder service specific components on that physical server. Okay, so then that server becomes now ready to start um, deploying or integrating with uh, Cinder plugins that are built in as part of OpenStack and which enables it to talk to your Cinder endpoints. So let's go ahead and do that. The second option asks me to select a specific driver type um, for this integration. So I'm going to select SolidFire here. And now I've been asked to specify SolidFire specific parameters. Right, so these are parameters such as username and password for my local SolidFire deployment. So I'm specifying those parameters. IP.solidfire.net is a local SolidFire instance that's running in my lab environment. So I'm going to go ahead and update block storage details. And it tells me that the details have been updated. So as I switch back to the infrastructure UI, you will notice that the assigned roles column for the first server is changed now. And it has the block storage role associated with it. Right, so now that server is Cinder enabled. 
It's not only Cinder enabled, it has the Solidifier Cinder, Cinder plugin that got installed behind the scenes. That plugin talked to the underlying Solidifier device and it successfully established that communication. So now our OpenStack setup, literally in a matter of minutes, is ready to um, start deploying new Cinder volumes using Solidifier. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do that, we're going to switch to the volumes and snapshots uh, menu. Mm -hmm. And this is where you create a brand new volume. So I'm going to um, select the source type to be image. So when you create a new volume with OpenStack, it gives you an option of selecting different source types. I could create a volume with an option none, which means it will create a completely empty volume. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and create a volume using an image. And what this means is that it will take an existing image that I give to it, the virtual machine image, and it will create a bootable volume from this. Okay, so I'm going to select the Cirrus image. It's a lightweight Linux virtual machine image. I'm going to give this a name. Image volume. I'm going to give it a size, let's say 10 gigabytes. I'm going to give it some key value pair tag value as well. Let's say operating system type is Cirrus. I'm going to go ahead and add volume. So now the volume is being created under the hood. The Solidify plugin talked to Solidifier, and it created a new volume. All right, so this should finish pretty fast. Um, this was a very small volume. I guess it's downloading the image from the image catalog. This is all happening locally within the platform line deployment. So it's going to happen fast. So we see that the new volume got created now. Um, and now this volume is ready for me to start creating new virtual machines. All right, so I'm going to actually go ahead and do that. I'm if I switch to the instances view, um, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a new virtual machine instance. And for source, I'm going to select the volume option. And this now tells me that there's only one bootable volume that's available for me to create a VM. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to apply this Cirrus flavor to it because it has the right amount of disk space, which is 12 gig, which is the minimum space you need because my volume size was 10 gig. I'm going to select this default network, and I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to go ahead and finish creation of this instance. And so in a minute, as the VM, <laughs> VM powers on, we will actually be able to log into its console and see that the Cirrus console comes up. So literally in a matter of minutes, we created a new VM using that SolidFire, using that volume that was deployed under the hood on SolidFire. Um, if I switch to the SolidFire interface, that's running right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and refresh this dashboard. This is Solidifier's own dashboard that gives you visibility into all my volumes that I've created right now. Um, it lets you associate some quality of service attributes with these volumes, etc. So let's see. I'm going to sort it by time. And you'll see that a new volume was created just now, right? At 2.12 this new volume with the UID was created. So the top one is the one that we created using OpenStack. And now we can do interesting things with this volume, with SolidFire interface or OpenStack. Right? So you can go ahead and edit this volume, and you can associate some quality of service parameters with it. Um, some defaults always get assi assigned to it. You can change them. Um, so that's really the power of the integration. Right? And what we're not seeing through OpenStack, but which is possible to do, is you can associate these quality of service profiles with your different um, storage endpoints. So OpenStack has a concept of volume types, <coughs> define storage specific profiles per se, quality of service profiles, and then assign them to your volumes. So that's in a nutshell how platform lines integration with any advanced storage, such as SolidFire or other, which is Cinder enabled works, right? All we need from you is that your storage has a Cinder compatible driver, right? And OpenStack already ships with a whole bunch of Cinder compatible drivers. So as long as you have that, we will be able to test it, certify it, and then make that integration available to you. Cool. So did you say that <clears throat> we can modify the QoS settings from within this interface right here? Correct. As well? And then well, we can associate that with, with a, a, a profile and then an image ultimately 
making it much easier for someone that's exactly kill someone right. based on that image or whatever yeah <laughs> That's absolutely right. And, and the UI doesn't have that capability yet that's okay. being added to the okay. UI, but you have all that flexibility to do um, with OpenStack, with Platform 9. So. That's cool. Yeah. Great. So it's really powerful because you could have multiple storage endpoints. You could have an LVM endpoint, a solidifier endpoint. Typically, we see customers sure. wanting to create a tiered storage strategy where they have their lower tier, which is probably NFS-based or maybe LVM-based. And then they pair it with a high tier, such as you know SSD, solid fire tier. And then OpenStack gives them all the flexibility in terms of utilizing those tiers. Right? You can assign some to some tenants. You can give some users only access to some tiers of resources. So very flexible. And you can do this with VMware as well as KVM. So you know, as long as that storage device works with the appropriate platform, we will be able to integrate with it. Any new storage vendors you're going to be working with down the road? Yeah, so we really, you know, make those decisions based on our customer demand. So right now, a few names that are floating are, uh, you know, Pure Storage is one, there's Nimble, there's a couple of more, right. um, some EMC options. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to be making some of those announcements fairly soon. Very cool. And the key is sender compatibility. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which majority of new storage uh, devices today tend to be. So it's a very, very easy requirement. And then the networking integration, we're not going to get into a demo of that right now, but it works exactly the same, right? So in that scenario, what you will do is you will assign a network role to one of your physical servers. And then that then becomes your Neutron server, basically. So that local server would then run components specific to Neutron, um, and it will enable integration with your choice of uh, SDN or networking solution. Right, so there um, in VMware as well as in KVM context, we are looking at different vendors, different solutions to integrate with. Uh, we're looking at NSX, for example. Cisco APIC is, I think, becoming really popular. And there's a few more. So those integrations are going to be coming up fairly soon. Very cool. Fantastic. So that was all about Section 3 which is about interoperability. Again, in summary, in few mouse clicks, you can integrate with storage that might be your traditional local storage or shared storage, or it could be advanced storage such as SolidFire. And the same thing with networking. And really make an end-to-end -end platform. Right, so with that, I've covered my live demo presentation section um, for this session today. And uh, to wrap it up, right, I wanted to thank all of you for giving us an opportunity to be here today. I um, wanted to thank Tech Fuel Day team, as well as all of the de delegates, uh, some new people, some old folks that we're familiar with. So thank you for being here. And uh, in summary, what Platform 9 is doing is we are fundamentally disrupting the OpenStack experience. Right? That's what we take pride in doing. We're disrupting the complexity barrier around private clouds. And we are trying to eliminate lock-in into a specific technology, VMware or KVM or Cisco hardware or any vendor-specific hardware. Our model is to be vendor neutral, um, infrastructure neutral, and really give you the full power in your hands to create a cloud with your choice of infrastructure. So with that, thank you so much. And I'll hand over to Shirish. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Uh, again, I just want to say, uh, you know, Thank you all. It's uh, been a pleasure coming back. And uh, as Madhura said, uh, we, it's been a really exciting seven months for us since Austin. And uh, we're very excited. It's very, it's very, very early in our journey. We have a long way to go. But we're really driven by building an Amazon-like experience that every enterprise can consume within the parameters that enterprises require. Uh, such as control over infrastructure and choices of infrastructure and control over data gravity and control over spending and, and being able to predict that spending. So that's the core focus of the company. And I think we started today's section with an intro of how the model works, a recap of how Platform 9's managed OpenStack solution layers on top of any existing infrastructure and is widely compatible while being very easy to get started with. And Madhura, thank you for walking us through two, three specific demo scenarios, the integration with vSphere, the ability to orchestrate modern scale-out applications, and the ability to plug and play any storage or network choices that are relevant to the infrastructure. So with that, I'd say thank you, and it's a wrap.